What's up, y'all? Dean Thomas here, and I appreciate you guys tuning in. Welcome to my little show. Um, I'm in Liverpool, England. I'm here for the UFC, and uh, I'm going to kick it with y'all for a couple of minutes. So, for those of you who are not familiar with me, let me just give you a little bit about myself. I am an MMA coach at American Top Team down in Coconut Creek. I work with Tyron Woodley, uh, Amanda Nunez, Antonio Carlos Jr., uh, a bunch of fighters on the come up, fighters you, you may have heard of, some of them uh, that you will hear of in the future. I'm a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I have professional boxing experience, and I fought in the UFC nine times, been a professional UFC fighter for, well, I was about, uh, had an eight year, seven, eight year tenure. I was on the Ultimate Fighter season four, fought all over the world. My MMA career lasted, professional career lasted about 15 years, so. Um, I've been in the game a long time, and now I'm going to, you know, chop it up with you guys. So here I am. I'm in Liverpool, England for the UFC. I'm here with Jillian Robertson. She's fighting Molly McCann uh, on Sunday. So um, I got I rode in the in the, uh, in the shuttle with uh, one of the Machado brothers. Oh, my goodness. And I didn't know which one it was, so I just kept referring to him as Professor. I didn't know which <laughs> which Machado brother it was. But I'm really looking forward to this weekend and, and the fights. But, um, first, let's get into some MMA stuff. Where are we at? We got, um, you know, one thing I want to talk about is, you know, the Damian Maya Kamaru Usman fight. That was a very key fight for the welterweight division of the UFC. Um, I think Kamaru Usman did a fantastic job. Um, he followed the blueprint. You know, here's the thing, you know, uh, I, I helped train Tyron Woodley for that fight against Damian Maya. And Tyron, not only did he win that fight, but. And he took a lot of criticism for that fight, but nobody is more appreciative of that fight than the two fighters who fought Damian Maia afterwards, Colby Covington and Komaru Usman, because they used the exact same blueprint. So, um, you know, that's one thing we could say. I mean, you, you may look at that fight and go, oh, you know, Tyron's a boring fighter, but hey, listen, you know, that blueprint that beat Damian Maia, it worked. And as you could see, you know, these guys have used that blueprint and 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 sort of I think put an end to Damian Maya's career. Sad to say because you know Damian Maya is a jujitsu guy. I like to think of myself as a jujitsu guy as well. But Damian Maya is a jujitsu guy. But I think his time has just passed him. I don't want to attribute that to you know jujitsu not being an essential part of MMA. But I just want to say that you know he's an older guy who wasn't able to make adjustments when other fighters were making adjustments towards him. He just didn't have the striking ability, the footwork, and the youth on his side to, to overcome those deficiencies that he had uh, against, you know, Tyron, then afterwards Colby and Kamaru Usman. But, you know, props to Damian Maia for representing Jiu-Jitsu in the way that he has. But even more props to the guys that beat him to, you know, to establish themselves. I'm really looking forward to seeing what Kamara Usman does in his in his career now. I mean, he's a guy that I, I've been watching since the Ultimate Fighter 20 season 21, when it was the Black Zillions versus American Top Team. I coached against him, and I and I didn't beat him. I couldn't beat him. Um, you know, I, I couldn't come up with the game plan and the strategy to beat him. And he's been getting better and better in every fight. And I, and I think that he's a real threat to anybody in the welterweight division. And he is, and I think he established himself with the win over Kamaru Usman. The only other fight that um, that I want to make note of that happened on that card uh, on the 19th was um, in Chile was... Uh, Tatiana Suarez and Alexa Grasso and I want to bring up Tatiana Suarez because you know I think that uh, you know the the women's strawweight division is can be and is working its way towards being a really hot division um, just because of you know and I, and I hate to use the word star power but you know you're, you're coming up with, with likable faces or unlikable faces, but just faces that people can kind of get behind. I think Rose Namajunas is a great champion. I, I like her philosophies when it comes to training and fighting. I love what she's doing. I mean, she beat Joanna Champion twice. I mean, she I mean, she beat her twice, and, and you can't take that away from her. Um, but now you have uh, Tatiana Suarez, who I think could potentially be the next big thing in that division just based on her skill set. You know, she's one, she's taller. So she's gonna have some height and reach advantage over a lot of the other of the girls in that division. And 
but I think her biggest advantage that she has over the other girls in that division is her wrestling ability. So once she has the height reach, so now it's going to force uh, these smaller and shorter girls to to want to get close to her to take away her height and reach advantage. But as they get close to her, it gives her the ability to take them down easier. So I think that um, Tatiana Suarez is going to be one to look out for that division. I mean, she made quick work of Alexa Grasso. Now, Tatiana Suarez, she also trains with um, some old-time guys that came up in my generation, uh, Batiste Mansouri and Romy Aram. These are some old-time guys with a tremendous grappling pedigree behind them, so she's being very well coached and very well groomed towards being the next big, big thing in that division. So mark my words, Tatiana Suarez will be, a next, will be one of the next big things in the women's strawweight division. So let me lighten things up a little bit. Fabricio Verdun. Word broke that he just tested positive for an illegal substance. Are you surprised? I'm not. And not because I think that the man was a cheater. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that some of these guys are just stupid. Now, here's why. Now, whether you are intentionally trying to gain an advantage by taking an illegal substance or not, you know what's good and what's not good for you and what's even risky for you. Now, understand this. When USADA first came in, they, they laid down the law and said, look, if you get tested positive, this could potentially ruin some careers. Now, throughout time, I think they got a little bit more lenient and, and you know, they made it a little bit a little bit easier for some guys. Some guys still have had a hard time. Look at Chad Mendez. He's still doing his time. Gleason T. Bow did his time. But they made it a little bit easier for some guys to, uh, to fight it and, and potentially win against. But uh, for the most part, it's not worth doing anything and taking anything other than, like, natural food almost sometimes. Now, I get taking supplements. Yeah, a lot of fighters take supplements, but when you look at historically and traditionally the supplements that come out of Brazil, that are manufactured and distributed from Brazil, those are risky. Those are risky. Now, I've had fighters that I work with take those, and I always discourage them from taking those. And sometimes it works, but I, I can't force guys to, to, to listen to me. Now... I don't know what it was that Fabricio Verdun took. He says that it'll all be it was a misunderstanding. But right now, that misunderstanding looks like guilt because of the situation. But listen, I'm not one to say, you know, guilty before, before proven innocent. But I will say innocent before guilty. But I will call stupid, stupid. If you're taking supplements from Brazil, I don't know if that's what you're taking. But if you're taking supplements from Brazil... Those supplements have a history of unreliability, and everybody knows it. And I don't even think that, you know, fighters from Brazil are necessarily intending to cheat. It's just those supplement companies are unreliable. You can't trust them. It's not worth taking. So if that's what you're doing, if that's what you got popped with, you deserve it. You're a dumbass. Because you can't be taking them, you, you should be taking supplements. As much money as you make and as and as much influence as you have, you couldn't get a sponsorship from on it. You couldn't get a sponsorship from, I don't know, bodybuilding.com, a, a reliable company. Come on, man. Do better. Do better. So the UFC just made another big announcement, ESPN just picked up all the rights, the TV rights to the UFC starting in 2019. That's good for me because I'm on an ESPN affiliate show, ESPN West Palm. Y'all can check me out on Josh Cohen and the home team uh, during the week from 3 to 5, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I skip Thursdays for training and then Friday, ESPN West Palm, get the app. But anyway, so ESPN picked this up. And I think that's good news because, you know, when it comes to um, sports, you know, there's nothing more uh, synonymous with, with sports than ESPN. I mean, it's a game changer for ESPN to invest in UFC and to have that type of faith uh, in in the UFC to say, hey, we want to carry your your brand and, and put on and, 
and showcase your fights. Um, that's a game changer. I think that, uh, you know, Fox was great, but it's, it doesn't carry the same weight as the ESPN brand does. I mean, it's a, it's a worldwide brand that um, it's synonymous with high-level sports. So um, I'm hoping that it can be lucrative for everybody involved, especially the fighters. I'm hoping it, it can give the fighters even more exposure because at the end of the day, that's what this whole game is about for fighters. It's about getting exposure and being relatable to people. So when you can get this exposure and be more relatable to people, and I think it legitimizes the sport even more because now you will have, um, you know, just just more more time in front of this legitimate market. So, um, man, congratulations to the UFC. Congratulations to ESPN for merging and making this happen. Hopefully, y'all got a job for me. You know what I'm saying? I'm available. So, if you have a job for me, ESPN, look out for me. Whew. Well, listen. You know what? I'm glad you guys tuned in and listened to my nonsense. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna raise up shortly. But you know, I'm out here in Liverpool, so I'm out here with Jillian Roberts, and she's fighting Molly McCann. Molly McCann was the uh, she is the Cage Warriors female champion at 125 pounds, um, and it's a Jillian second fight in the UFC. She was on the season uh, 24, I think, of the Ultimate Fighter. But uh, you know, we're looking forward to to doing what we do best. You know, somebody hit me up the other day and said, uh, "You think it's gonna be a good fight?" And I was thinking, like, what do you mean a good fight? Like. As a coach and a practitioner, like I don't, I don't really necessarily know what that means from a, a fan spectator's point of view because they said a good fight. I said, so what do you mean? And this person was like, you know, um, you know, entertain a fight. And I said, wait a minute, listen here, that is not what we can't come to do, unfortunately. And I know it may sound bad, but you know, as a coach to a fighter who wants their fighter to go home safe and healthy and in one piece. Uh, Winning is what we came to do and winning impressively and as easily as possible So whether it's a good fight, I hope you enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? We, I certainly do you know, I train my fighters to be aggressive, but 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 be careful You know, uh, I don't want to say cautious, but I, I want them to to be careful and not get hurt But I train them to be aggressive and look to finish so I hope that's entertaining for you because Going out and, and trading isn't the safest thing for my people. But anyway, listen. Uh, the main event, Darren Till and Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Now, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson is someone that I am extremely familiar with. My nephew is one of his main guys. Like, he might even be out here. I haven't talked to him yet, but my nephew is one of his main uh, training partners and, and, and guys that he works with. Um, his name's Carl Reed. He was actually on one of the, the seasons of the Ultimate, oh, but actually the Contender Series. Then, um, and I trained against Stephen Thompson twice with Tyron Woodley. And I will tell you that he's no easy person to train for. He was one of the more difficult camps because he is such a unique stylistic uh, challenge and he's a specialist in what he does. And that's something that it's very difficult to prepare for. And if you just prepare for uh, a regular striker and you are just going to the boxing gym and you're going to kickboxing with guys or your buddies, you will not have success against a guy like Stephen Thompson. I can tell you that firsthand. Um, I, but I do think that this is going to be a big challenge for Darren Till. I think Darren Till is a is a, a great character. One, first and foremost, I think he's a great character. I think he's something that, you know, the, the Europeans can, a, a person that the Europeans can get behind. He's charismatic, he's, uh, he's got a certain charm about him, and he's violent, he can fight. However, I think this is a big test for him. Um, it's easy to look at his last fight against Donald Cerrone and you know already have him as the second coming. I'm not gonna go that far and say that he is the second coming. I will say that this is a big test for him, and, and this is a challenge that he should embrace because if he does pass this with flying colors, it will automatically put him you know, at one of the top one of the top spots at the welterweight division all amongst uh, Kamaru Usman and Colby Covington uh, Rafael Dos Anjos. So this is a, a good test for him now when he fought Donald Cerrone we, we can't forget about you know the conditions of that fight like Donald Cerrone You know, he's a big name and he's a he's a fan favorite 
But he's still, he's just a lightweight at the end of the day. He's a lightweight who sometimes fights unmotivated just because he likes to fight. So I think Darren Till took advantage of him. You know, Donald Cerrone, you know, went all the way. I can't remember. I think that fight was in Poland. Donald Cerrone went all the way to Poland, probably, you know, was was drinking the night before. And he just likes to fight. He likes to have a good time. And I think Darren Till took advantage of him. Now, I'm not saying that Darren Till is incapable of winning this fight. I just think this is a big challenge for him. So I am leaning towards Stephen Wonderboy Thompson just because I think he is more experienced. He's 35 years old, but I think with his style and skill set, I don't think he's taking much punishment. And I think he's kind of a young 35. He takes care of himself. He's healthy. So I'm leaning towards Stephen Thompson in this fight. Although, you know, Darren Till, I'm giving him the opportunity to show me something. Uh, but this is a card, this whole entire card is full of uh, European fighters that not a lot of people know about. And that's good because these are those cards that like you look on paper again like this is all like when, sometimes we look at these fights on paper and we go oh this card's gonna suck this card's not gonna be any good but you can't judge a card on paper because the cards that look good on paper that means that there's a lot to lose for these fighters and these fighters know that and they fight a lot more cautiously and those fights tend not to be as great now you're when you're dealing with you know these european fighters who you know, are fighting in their home. Most of, most of them are close to home. You know, they're trying to show out. So I'm looking forward to this card in the sense that I think that these guys, these fighters here are going to show out. They're going to give it their all. There are some some up and coming names on this, on this card that I think that a lot of people should look out for. I think Arnold Allen is a name that not a lot of people know, but I, I've, I watched him fight before. He's got a great skill set. If he can put it together mentally and and stay focused. I think he's another name that you may hear about in the future. Um, Manny Bermudez, a, a fighter out of Boston, who he's 12 and 0 right now. I think that um, he's another name at Bantamweight you can look out for. So, yeah, this is a good card. I, I don't want you guys to write it off just because because it doesn't have the star power that you may be used to sometimes in some cards. But you know, if you're looking for you know, talented fighters, I think that you have some potential in this card. And, and if you're looking for just sheer entertainment from that aspect of, you know, guys banging, you know, Europe is the place for that. Like, this, these guys love to bang. These guys, you know, this, they have rich history in boxing. So these guys love to bang. So this is a great card in that aspect. Oh, wow. I think that's about my time, fellas. Um, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Listen, this is just, I'm just working. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to have some fun here. You know, I want to, and I want to make this thing, uh, I want to make this thing right for you guys. So, you know, keep tuning in. You know, I'm going to be making some changes. I may, I may be doing some interviews, bringing some guys in, maybe on location, you know, in different spots, you know, outside. You know, I'm, I'm going to have some fun with this. So tune in, guys. Next time I'll see y'all, I'm Dean Thomas. And I'm out.